Uh, thank you, uh, Joe, and thank you, Mika. Uh, and Mika and Tom Blair, I'm just delighted uh, this many people showed up for our book party. Um, uh, first, I'd like to thank the Vice President of the United States, Joe Biden. He could have given a dinner speech. Uh, I think it's a salute to the Atlantic Council and to all of you that he gave a speech of huge importance and, and chose to give it here, and we'll certainly put it up on our site tomorrow in full text, but, uh, but let's salute the Vice President. <laughs> also, I would be remiss if I did not thank the Atlantic Council staff for repeating this magic year after year. Uh, they make throwing an event of this magnitude look easy, uh, but I assure you that it is not. And beyond the people doing this event, this is the ethos, this is the work ethic of the staff in every one of our programs and centers. And I want all of the staff of the Atlantic Council who are here to please stand and join me in applauding them. Now, I do want to thank uh, my chairman, Senator Hagel. I can't tell you what an honor it's been to work with someone of such integrity, principles, focus. Um, uh, uh, we're, we're just getting a hell of a lot done. Um, I also want to thank him for the salute he gave my book, but I do want you to know, Senator, that no good deed goes unpunished. Um, sitting next to me is Charlie Rose. Um, and my publisher is so thrilled that Charlie Rose is interviewing me next year for my book. His show has a greater percentage of viewers who are actually book buyers than anything on television, perhaps. And he leaned over to me and he said, you know, I think you're getting a little too overexposed for my show. <laughs> <laughs> so, Charlie, um, forget anything that's happened this evening. Um, uh, okay. It's Anna Elias and Shamis, my vice president, and her team who creates this magic. Anna, I wonder if you could come up uh, uh, and join me on stage to help acknowledge our supporters briefly. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fred. Uh, it's my great privilege to stand here with you and thank all of our supporters. Uh, in fact, if you ever decide to launch your own talk show, warning Fred, I'd like to apply as your co-host. <laughs> how, how, how would Sunday brunch be? Fine. <laughs> okay. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our 50th anniversary and dinner co-chairs who are with us here tonight. Please hold your applause till the end. Co-chairs, please stand so we can recognize your amazing contributions to the Atlantic Council. Bob Abernathy, Adrian Arsht, Shaukat Assis, Jose Maria Aznar, Tom Blair, Henry Caddo, Manuel Fernando Espiritu Santo, Tom Gloser, Boyd and Gray, Baha Hariri, George Lund, Izat Majid, Alexander Murchev, Bob Moritz, Georgette Nos Nosbacher, Hutham Olayan, Tunchai Ozilan, Dinu Patrizio, Brent Scowcroft, Jim Turley, Tretan Vasilev, Jacob Wallenberg, Macha Vitutsky, and John Wren. Uh, thank you, Anna, and thank you uh, for pronouncing them all perfectly. Um, uh, but I think if you heard those names, you, it captures the global, the transatlantic and global nature um, of, the, of the Atlantic Council. Um, <laughs> there are people cheering in all sorts of different languages around here. Um, 
Uh, Joe, you pointed out the growing relevance of our mission, even in our 50th year, renewing the Atlantic community for global challenges. President Kennedy talked about it in his State of the Union a half century ago, where he worried, and if you read this State of the Union, it's really quite amazing, how deeply he worried about the state of the, the alliance, even as he noted how crucial it was. For his part, President Obama recently called the transatlantic relationship the global catalyst. Quote, neither Europe or the United States can confront the challenges of our time without the other, said President Obama. It is, it is with that, actually let me go back to Senator Biden for one other second before I move on. I want to echo one comment Vice President Biden made and it was his salute to Ron Asmus, who died over the weekend at age 53. His death was a big loss to the German Marshall, Fund and our, uh, German Marshall Fund and our friends at the German Marshall Fund. It was a huge loss to the transatlantic community. He was a friend of mine for 30 years, an inspiration to me so often, an architect of NATO enlargement and a friend of so many in this audience. He would not tolerate a moment of silence, but he would appreciate a round of applause. It is in the context of our mission, renewing the Atlantic community for global challenges, that we launch the Atlantic Council's 50th anniversary and announce two ground initiatives that Vice President mentioned. It is my honor to be joined, and they will uh, come up here uh, at, at the end of all of these remarks, uh, by our Chairman, uh, Senator Hagel, our International Advisory Board Chairman, uh, General Scowcroft, General Jones, Baha Hariri, and former Pakistani Prime Minister Shaukat Aziz and George Lund for this important moment in the program. Each of them was instrumental to, to the, these two initiatives. As we celebrate the 50th anniversary, we are looking forward to the next half century. We also want to take up President Obama's challenge that the Atlantic community act more as a global catalyst because we know it's not there and we know it's essential. In that spirit, we are announcing this evening a year-long campaign to create the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security with its aim of harnessing America's most important international relationship for this new set of global challenges. And at this crucial moment in the Mideast history, we also launched the Rafi Hariri Center for the Middle East to bring together North America, Europe, Russia, the Middle East, and North Africa in common efforts to address the crucial urgent and long-lasting challenges of that region. So this is not going to be fixed in weeks or months. This is going to be addressed in years with a great deal of strategic patience. It is my privilege now to yield the floor to the chairman-designate, and we're so grateful that he's taken on this job, the chairman-designate of the Brent Scowcroft Center on International Security, General Jim Jones. As you know, Jim is former National Security Advisor, former Supreme Allied Commander of Europe, and former Marine Corps Commandant, and most important of all your accolades and, and positions as former Chairman of the Atlantic Council. Um, you're also the recipient of the Atlantic Council's Distinguished Military Leadership Award at our 2007 awards dinner, where, uh, for those who were there, it was quite a moment in history, he sang Edith Piaf in his fluent French. Um, I only mention that because General Jones made me promise that I would not. <laughs> so please salute our dear friend, a fair singer, and a great American, General Jim Jones.